QuickBooks Online 2023. Add normal expenses to books from Bank Feed Limbo and Make Rules. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be comparing the sample company or using it to compare the accounting view, the one that the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. If you want to change between the two views, you can select the cog up top and change the view on down below. We're going to now be duplicating some tabs to put reports in. We're going to do this every time going forward because as we enter the information into the bank feeds, it will be used to create and construct the end result, that being the financial statement. So just a quick recap on that process. Remember that in prior presentations, we imported the bank feed information. So now we've got the information from the banks in what I call the bank feed limbo, which is located in the accounting view on the left-hand side in the banking. And so there we have our information from the bank feed limbo. These transactions down below, we want to add so that they're used to create or double check the data input for the financial statements. If in the business view, the bank feed limbo is located in the bookkeeping and then the transactions up top where we have the uh, bank feed information in the uh, business view. Now remember the objectives as we start to do our bookkeeping from the business perspective, of course, revenue generation is the goal. From the accounting or bookkeeping perspective, our goal is to enter the transactions that are happening in the past or happening as we go as easily as possible, utilizing the bank feeds to automate as much as we can and being able to enter the transactions in such a way that we can communicate with the people we do business with well, customers, vendors, and employees. So now we're focused on that end result, which are the reports. That's the end result of the bookkeeping we're looking for. We want those reports at least to make the, ta the tax returns from, as well as external reporting and internal decision making. So let's duplicate some tabs to generate those reports. I'm gonna right click the tab up top and duplicate it. And then I'm gonna right click the tab up top again and duplicate it again. I'm gonna to start to do this every time. We're gonna go back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking, going into the reports on the left hand side. One of the two favorite reports will be the balance sheet. It's almost always gonna be in favorites up top because these are the financial statement reports. So we'll go into the balance sheet if you're in the business view by the way the reports are located in the business overview and then into the reports on the left hand side so there's our balance sheet i'm going to change the range going from 010122 to let's say 123122 i'm adding data or detail from the bank feeds in the year of 2022 in my example problem we're going to run it let's go to the tab to the right do the same thing reports on the left but this time open up the profit and loss, the income statement type of report, the P&L, different names for the same thing, close up the hand boogie, changing the range from 010122 tab 123122 and run it. So obviously nothing is in it at this point in time, even though we have data in bank feed limbo. 
back to Bank Fade Limbo in the first tab, and we're gonna be entering the data. So now I'm gonna look for those types of transactions that are probably the easiest types of transactions to enter into the system, those being the normal kind of expenses, things like the utility bill, the telephone bill, and so on and so forth. So if I'm looking at my flowchart, I'm looking at the, the vendor or expense cycle, payable cycle, you might call it, where at the end of the cycle, we would expect uh, cash to be going down for goods and services that we are purchasing. Now, the easiest way for that to happen with the use of bank feeds is that we set up electronic transfers. We pay our transactions as they become due for the telephone bill, the utility bill, and so on and so forth. Wait till they clear the bank and then we just record them with the bank feeds as they do so. That's what we're going to do now. The second easiest method or step away from that, a cash based system, but one that you're not completely dependent on the bank feeds is you write a check, a physical check, which you enter into your accounting system when you write it. And then when the check clears, it will clear with the bank feeds and you use the bank feeds to match your data input. That's more of a full service accounting system because now you're using the bank feeds to verify, help you with an internal control help you do the bank reconciliations. Or you might have an accrual system where you put the bill into the system as a bill, increase in accounts payable, a non-cash related item, not connected to bank stuff at all, therefore the bank feeds can't help you to record it. And then you pay the bill and then you usually match it with the bank feed. So we're doing the easiest thing here. Small businesses often will do this, right? We're gonna just pay the bill electronically. We're gonna try to make everything automatic and then we're going to record it with the bank feed. So let's go back on over and look for a bill that would be good to do that with. I'm gonna sort by the date here. And so I've got the older stuff up top and I'm gonna look for, let's sort it by actually description. I'm gonna sort it by description. And I've got this SoCal gas bill. So you've got the detail in the memo. Now remember in, in the cog up top, I checked everything off or typically my general rule would be to go through here and I'm gonna check everything off. So I'm gonna check that off as one line and then I'm gonna check off basically all of this stuff that I'd like to see and I'll make it 300. Every time you go out and back into it, you might have to adjust that. And then going down, I'm going to be picking up that line item of the SoCal gas. So I have the full description here of the whole, all the stuff in the memo and then uh, the payee uh, we're not, I, I could try to add this kind of as we go, but it's going to be information that's pulling from oftentimes the description information. Now, if this was a check, you won't have this description information, but you might have the canceled check. So you'd have to actually go into your bank and look at the canceled check to who you wrote the check from to. And then you have the account. QuickBooks is, I, I believe, just guessing the account that it should go to. Note that it's wrong right here. So if you were to just add this arbitrarily, then you wouldn't have a vendor to assign to, which isn't required, but useful. And it would be going to the wrong account because it's going to owner's equity instead of an expense type of account. So if you click on it, then you're gonna open up the more detail on down below. We've got the category up top. This is where most kind of expense items will be. A uh, find a match would be a situation, for example, if you entered a check, and then you're trying to verify this transaction, tying it out to the check, doing a bank reconciliation kind of function instead of entering a transaction. We'll talk more about that later. I'll record a tr as transfer means that instead of using like an expense type of form, which is the type of form that will be generated when we enter this into the system, it'll use a transfer type of form useful to clarify some of the detail of the transaction when there's a transfer between two different checking accounts. For example, record as a credit card payment. That's similar to a transfer type of transaction, but it's a transfer specifically to like a credit card. So it's gonna do the same kind of transaction, but the transactional detail will look a little bit different. We'll talk about that when we get to credit cards. We're gonna record a, an expense type of form generally, which will be the category. If it's a decrease, default, category, it'll be an expense type form that's generated from this bank feed data input. If it was an increase, then it would be a deposit would be the default. The date is coming from the bank feeds. So that's probably not something that you're generally going to want to change. The customer or vendor, if we had a customer or vendor already set up, then we don't want to duplicate or have like multiple customers that were paying to the same place 
because that messes up our sorting kind of stuff. Now note that if you could record the transaction without a customer, the only required field, you can see with the asterisk is the category or account. But uh, adding the customer is something you generally would like to do because it'll give you some more sorting information by customer. Now, since you're not tracking accounts payable and whatnot, it's not as necessary to deal with your customers. You know, it's not as vital as if you were if, as if you were dealing with a customer that you call up and contact with, like someone you might buy inventory from. But you might still want to sort the transactions by customer. So I always recommend adding them. You can usually get the information if using electronic transfers from some detail in the memo. So I'm just going to try to copy this part of the memo, put it up here in the customer or vendor, and then I'm just going to add it. So if I hit tab, it'll ask me to add it. And I'm going to say, okay, let's add it. Do I want to add it as a vendor or a customer? It's going to be a vendor because we're selling to them. We can import or add more detail as we do this. This would mean, do I want to add a telephone number and whatnot, a bunch more detail to it? If it's just the SoCal gas company, we probably just want the minimum so I can sort by who we paid to. So I'm just going to save it as is like that. Then the category. It has no category here uh, by default because we've never categorized it before. So I'm going to select a category. So this is going to be like utilities or something like that. Now notice in the general ledger account, we deleted all the general ledger accounts because I want to show you how to construct them as we go. Let me jump on over to the general ledger real quick. I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate that tab, bring that back to the left hand side and then go down to the accounting on the left hand side and we're in our chart of accounts. If you're in the business view, by the way, that is located in the bookkeeping on the left hand side and then the chart of accounts. So. Remember that the chart of accounts by default gave us this whole long list of chart of accounts. Now, generally with the expenses, my general rule would be use the chart of accounts that they give you as like a guide if you don't have any idea of the accounts that you're going to set up. And if you don't like the name they provide, then use that account and then go into your chart of accounts and adjust the name by editing the account to the name that you prefer instead of having two accounts that have a similar name which will mean that you're likely to post to two different accounts that are basically the same kind of account in the future. And if there's no account at all, then you add the account to the system after two months of data input, then go back into your chart of accounts and make all the accounts you're not using inactive so you don't have all these excess type of accounts. But if you have some familiarity with what you're trying to do and you'd rather just construct your accounts as you go, which is what we're going to do here, then we can go in and delete all the accounts like we did and we're going to just build them as we go. Now this first account then I'm going to add it basically as we go from here instead of adding it in the chart of accounts. I could go to the chart of accounts and say new account and add the account here. But oftentimes we will just add the accounts as we're categorizing them right in this field. So this is going to be an expense type of account. So I'm going to say it's going to be a new account. It's going to be an expense type of account. So we'll hit the drop down. Most of the uh, outflows will be expenses. I'm not too worried about this added detail type of account because it doesn't really add a whole lot, but I'll pick utilities in this case. And then I'm going to say the name. That's the important part. Now notice this is the gas bill. So this is where your questions come into play in terms of how you want to group your accounts. Some people make, make way too many expense accounts, get way too detailed, have way too many sub accounts. Other people don't make enough expense accounts. They just want to make like one account called expenses. That's not detailed enough. You want to find a happy medium that fits in with your company. So for example, with the electric bill, do you want to group one utility bill that adds like phone, the electric, the gas, the trash all in one account? Or do you want to have a separate account for each of them, a separate account for gas bill, separate account for electric, a separate account for the telephone, for the trash? Or do you want to have a utilities parent account and then a bunch of sub accounts underneath it so you can collapse to one parent account called utilities and then have all that detail below it? In my opinion, most of the time, uh, utilities used to include telephone and, and the uh, electric and the gas, but I feel like the telephone breaks out into its own area now because it's fairly expensive. 
and so I won't even put it under utilities anymore. And then the gas and the electric, I feel like I can still group together under one account called utilities. That's what I typically do. So that's gonna be my method that I will use here. Just put it under utilities. I'm gonna say, okay. And so there's our account. Now the tags are those specific things that you can add if you want some more sorting data, kind of like classes if you've dealt with the classes. So there's the transaction. We can add attachments if we want to attach something to it, like the actual physical bill, if that would be useful to attach. We can create a rule, which we will do shortly. Excluding it would basically kind of try to delete it. And categorize. we can do, look at the categorization history. Then we can look at the splits or we can add. Now the split allows you to, to assign to multiple categories. So notice you only have one category here. If, I, if I'm going to say, hey, I, I, want to, I want to have two utility bills because I have two accounts or something like that one for one location and another for another location then i can i can use the split field to break that out so that could be quite useful that's quite nice to have that so that you don't have a transaction that's limited to only two uh, accounts we don't need it here adding it would pull it from here uh, into the promised land and record the transaction but i would like to create a rule as we go now remember if you do not create a rule and you just add it QuickBooks might then ask you to create a rule, but I want to actively create the rules as I go, making it easier and easier going forward to enter the transactions. So I'm going to make a rule. I'm going to name the rule, usually the same name as I pulled from the, the, uh, the information for the vendor. It's going to be a payout rule as opposed to, uh, as opposed to a money in type of rule and then all bank accounts. So do I want it to apply to all bank accounts or just the one that I'm currently in? Doesn't really matter in our case because well, I'll, I'll choose all bank accounts in our case and include the following. So we have the choice of any or it has to have all of them. We're only going to have one rule here. So it doesn't matter if I choose any or all, but the difference would be, and we'll talk more about this later when we dive into rules. Uh, if you have multiple rules, you could say it needs to pass all of these rules in order for the rule to apply or you can say it just needs to complete one of the rules any of the rules is good enough to apply that rule so it doesn't matter this way because we only have one rule you're going to pull from the description or the bank text now if you have a problem with the rule applying try taking a difference between the description and the bank text because the description might be what the quickbooks pulls in to the memo area area when they truncate this memo information. I believe the bank text is showing all of the information. So I like to use all of the information so that I can make sure it's not just being truncated from what, what uh, QuickBooks is doing. I don't need all this detail. I just wanted to say, hey, look, if it contains SoCal Gas Company, that's all I need. And then I'm gonna say it contains or doesn't contain or is exactly. I don't need it to be exact doesn't contain no i'm going to say contains that's usually what what the default will be you can test the rule here so if i hit the testing of the rule this rule will apply to three uh, current unreviewed transactions so I, I believe that makes sense and then the transaction type is an expense account this is what we already set up before in the prior window the categories utilities the payee the vendor socal gas company no tags are applied uh the the bank replace the bank memo uh so this is it's pulling in the memo information so automatically confirm transaction transactions this rule applies to so this would be do i want you to automatically add the transaction oftentimes when i'm starting out i'm going to say no don't add it automatically because i want to verify that the rule is correct and give at least that final check before you finalize it and then later on, you might just verify it so that it just adds it to your financial statements without even you glancing at it. But I'm gonna turn it off for now and then I'll save it and boom, the rule has been applied. So now we've got these three transactions that have a rule that has been applied to it, which is nice. And also note that I can scroll up top here and I can sort now that the rules are applied. So if I have a bunch of rules that have been applied, then I can sort by the ones that have a rule applied to it and that'll pull these on, on up and filter by the items with a rule. Okay, so I'm just gonna add one of these. I'm gonna add this one right now and just look at, the, look at what happens to the transaction. So if I click on it, I can accept it. I could click on all of them and accept them at one time, 
but I'm just gonna add this one, or if I wanted to just add that one, I can click add over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it, and that takes it out of the bank feed limbo and brings it on over to the promised land. So it's now been categorized. So you can say the second tab over here is where the, where you have it as having been categorized. This has been added. So if you if you log out and you go back into the system, you might not always have these items that'll be categorized. But if you're currently working in the session, the items that you have added will be you know in the categorized area over here. And it's been pulled away or out of the items on this side. So if I say rule applied, I still have these other two that have the rule applied to it. Okay, let's look at the financial statements. If I go to the balance sheet and run it, then obviously the, the cash account has been affected. So I can drill back down now from the checking account back into the transaction. And now we've got that transaction. There it is. Notice the form used and expense form. So it's not gonna take me when I drill back down to the source document to the bank feed data input screen. It's gonna take me to an expense form. The bank feed data input screen is a shorthand way for us to to enter the transaction so online banking matches so this is this gives you a, a link to the actual detail for for the for the bank which it says matches which kind of indicates like you entered the transaction and then you matched it no what happened is you created the transaction from the bank but obviously it matches what is on the bank helping you with the bank reconciliation because of course you constructed it from the bank so closing this back out scrolling back up i'm going to go back to my reports if i go to the tab to the right where we put the income statement now we have something on the income statement we have the utilities account that we have put in clicking on that there's the utilities account being constructed as we go so that's one of the easier types of transactions to input now note that we don't really need the vendor to make the 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 transaction or the profit and loss notice i have it here by category what we used it for not by vendor so we don't usually want to put i got i i got an expense a, a socal gas expense no we say utility expense but sometimes we might want to you know sort our information by vendor or track who we paid so it's possible to add the information from the bank feed without adding the vendor but you still want to add the vendor because why not have that added information and how you might use that is you might go to like to the first tab over here and you could go down to your your hamburger and i could go into the the uh the vendor section which is under expenses which i would call like the vendor center closing up the hamburger if you're in the business view by the way i've got too many views floating in my head if you're in the business view it would be under the get paid and pay area and then we would look at the pay area. And then if I go over here and I look at my, my vendors, I can go into my vendors over here and then there's my SoCal gas. And if I go into SoCal gas, I've got my transaction for that particular vendor. So if I wanted a question about that particular vendor, whether I paid them or not, I can go into here and search that, that information. It's not as vital a tool as it would be if we were tracking like bills because we're not tracking bills we just entered the expense we paid it as it became due but it's still useful to track in that way you can also go to the expenses tab and i can sort and filter my information here by say expense forms that are being created or any way i want to filter it and i can search for my transactions that way as well if you're in the other view by the way the uh, bank feeds practice file or if you're in the sample company this is this other area is in bookkeeping and then transactions and then it's in the expenses uh, tab so it's a bit different location there all right so let's do it again i'm going to go back on over and let's go to the to the banking information and i'm gonna i'm gonna x out of the rule that i put in place here and then i'm gonna go down and let's let's add like a telephone one this time so I'm gonna add this telephone one here. So I've got my description, that looks good. Uh, this line, I'm gonna need the payee. So I'm gonna just hit the drop down this time and look at the added detail. It's gonna be a categorization instead of a match, instead of a record transfer and so on. The date is from the bank feed. So that's typically what we're gonna be keeping there. The customer, once again, we, ha we don't have one because this is the first time we're doing the data input. So I wanna be picking 
information from the memo, which is pulling in from the bank feeds, and usually use that to create a vendor field, noting that if you don't put a vendor, QuickBooks will not will still record the transaction as long as you have a customer. But you want to make sure to add something here because you you want to have a vendor typically because it'll give you that added detail. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna paste that in. I'm gonna make the vendor as a vendor. I'm not gonna add any more details like the phone number or anything to it. I just wanna know who I paid and be able to track it that way. Notice it's trying to categorize it to services, which is an income account. That's quite strange. You don't wanna do that. Obviously QuickBooks has a very limited number of accounts to try to guess where it should go because I deleted all the accounts, but I don't trust QuickBooks to do that anyways. That's why I deleted the accounts. I wanna construct where I want the accounts to go and build the accounts as I set them up. So I'm gonna then say, let's create a new account just like we did last time. And it's gonna be an expense type account. M most of the accounts are gonna be expense accounts because most of the transactions will be decreases to cash. I'll put it under utilities again. I'm not too worried about this subcategory. I'm more worried over here. Now, once again, you have your decision making. Do I want it under utilities? No, I, I don't want it under utilities this time. I, and I don't want a parent account of utilities. I just wanna break telephone out by itself telephone now you might call tell you might call it the phone you might call it telephone you might have you know cell phone whatever you want to call the phone bill you might have multiple phone bills these days it used to be telephone was under utilities you might say now i've got telephone as a parent account and then cell phones versus landline versus whatever phone bills you know you might have you might put your cable bill under the phone bill i don't know so but it depends on what how you want to track things personally uh, for yourself. There's no hard cut line in terms of exactly what you need to do on those groupings. It matters most in terms of what's going to be the best breakout of the information for your internal management reporting purposes. Sometimes there's tax implications for certain things like auto expense and stuff, but you know, we'll, you have to first do what's best for you. And then you got to deal with any kind of tweaks that you have to put in place to deal with the tax code which is inevitable tweaks are going to be needed. So telephone, we're going to save it, save it and close it. And then I'm not going to put any tags on it. So that's that added kind of idea. We could put attachments. I'm going to create a rule for it. Let's create a rule. I want to make my own rules as we go. I don't want to just rely on QuickBooks to do the rules because they might make funny rules. And I want to make the rules the way I want to make the rules. So we're going to say Verizon Wireless. It's going to be a money out rule because money is going out. It's gonna be all accounts. I'm gonna say, okay, let's do it for all accounts. That's fine. And then all uh, all of the conditions have to be met or possibly uh, some of the conditions have to be met. I'm just gonna keep it at all conditions. Then we have the uh, description versus the bank text. I like choosing the bank text. It contains, that's usually the default that you're gonna have. All I want is Verizon Wireless. I don't want uh, any other junk in the memo. You could test the rule. It's applying it out to three areas. That looks right. Expenses is the expense for. Telephone is the category. Payee looks good. We'll keep the memo in the memo line. I'm not going to add it automatically, but I want to give that final check off manually, even though it's going to give all the information to the other ones uh, itself. So I'm going to save it and let's check it out so save it and check it out so there's the rule has been applied if i scroll up top and i filter my transactions by rules now rules applied you've got the utility rules and these telephone rules so i'm going to apply the rule to i'm going to add this one only this time so i'm going to add it i could check it off and add it here i can check all of them off and add them at one time but i'm just going to add it this way just that one for now and there is that. Now, by the way, the rules are located up here. So if I go to the rules and I need to adjust my rules, I can go into my rules. These are the two of rules. And then I can edit the rules and that'll give me my editing information. So those are the rules that are applied. If you just let QuickBooks do the rules willy nilly any way they want, you might end up with a bunch of rules, some of which do or do not apply. And they're not specific to what you want. You might not have an idea of what they're doing, which can be problematic. So I would try to try to make your rules I mean, the better you set it up when you first set up your stuff, the easier it's going to be in the future. Okay, so I'm going to then run it. And then if I go into my checking account, drilling down on it, we've got our, our Verizon. If I go into the Verizon, it's going to show us an expense form, a form that decreases, it's a, basically a check form that, without the check number. So I'm going to close that back out. The other side is going to the 
profit and loss. I'm gonna run it to refresh it. And there we have our telephone. If I go into the telephone, then we have our telephone bill. I can zoom back drilling down to the source document once again, make uh, the expense form. So you see every transaction has two accounts affected to it. We're recording the transaction. We can enter it. We can double check it on the financials. Let's go back to the, to the first tab and I can open up the hand boogie and scroll down to the expenses area and note that I can search by vendor now and look at my detail by vendor. I also might have some other reports that I can generate reports by who I paid by vendor. And that could be useful for like 1099 reporting and whatnot if you're paying to contractors so that you can know who you paid and set up your vendors and make sure you're uh, uh, abiding by those requirements. And then you can go to the expense tab and you can also sort by your transactions, your paying out uh, transactions over here. I'm gonna open my trial balance just to show another report that you might use to kind of check your data input that's a little bit easier to use than the balance sheet and your income statement. So I'm gonna go to the reports on the left-hand side. I'll type in up top just trial balance. And this is basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement. So if I run this from 0101 uh, 22 to 123122 and run it, so now we've got the balance sheet accounts, cash, and then equity accounts on top of the income statement accounts. So notice how much more streamlined this is to look at than going to the balance sheet, which has all these sub accounts. There's not very much of anything going on. It's still fairly long. And then the income statement. So as your reports get longer, if you just wanna go here, you can look at basically your chart of accounts and the numbers and drill down on them in the same way as you can with a balance sheet or income statement, but have all those accounts in one place. So we'll get into some more complex transactions in future presentations.